Blackmore plays in the unaccustomed position of left back on the ground where he made his debut in the final match of last season in his normal midfield position. And at fullback on the Forest side, there's Australian Alan Davidson making his first home appearance. He was offered a contract by Arsenal last season but couldn't get a work permit. He doesn't need one now because he's since married a Scottish girl. Well, Davidson made his debut at Watford last week and Forrest's only change is to bring in forward David Riley for defender Bryn Gunn. Since we covered their match against Spurs, Dutchman Hans Seggers has taken over in goal, Paul Hart has returned to defence and Johnny Method has reverted to midfield. So there are three Dutchmen on the pitch because Arnold Muren is back in the United side, together with two other internationals, Frank Stapleton and Alan Brazil. Mark Hughes is suspended, Norman Whiteside has been injured, Jesper Olsen is dropped to substitute. But all three will be available for next Wednesday's UEFA Cup tie with Dundee United, so the competition for places is really hotting up. And the Forest flag flying at half-mast today, and their players wearing black armbands in memory of 16-year-old Lloyd Bloomfield, who died after playing in an A-team match for Forest last weekend. And the referee this afternoon is Tony Ward from North London. An important five days in the season of Manchester United, wearing white this afternoon. The point behind the championship leaders at the start of play, and then this UEFA Cup return in Dundee on Wednesday night. Hodge with the free kick for Davenport. And Hodge again. Steve Hodge was rumoured to be unsettled a few weeks ago and Ron Atkinson, the Manchester United manager, made an offer for him of a quarter of a million pounds, which was turned down. And there are two the other way for United. One of them is Alan Brazil, and if he'd caught that well, it would have completed what was a fine move. Swift attacking play by Manchester United and Gordon Strachan right in the centre of it. Robson's header and Brazil. Hodge. Waiting for support wide of him. Davidson. And again. And a third time. Riley. Good determination there by the Australian. in the game again here. Method. Moses to Stapleton. And Brazil's in the centre and they might get him through here. Beautiful ball and Brazil brought down by the goalkeeper penalty. Well, first things first, a lovely ball from Frank Stapleton that split the defence. Alan Brazil, I thought, might have overrun it slightly. Might be a bit hard on him. He was going round the keeper when the apparent contact was made and referee Tony Ward awarded a penalty and Gordon Strachan, who missed his last penalty for Manchester United but has scored all the others, aims to improve his record against the man who gave it away. And he does, right in the corner. Gordon Strachan with a career penalty record now of 54 successful attempts out of 60. Manchester United supporters applaud the goal after 14 minutes and Hans Segers gave away the penalty and had no chance of saving it. And I don't think there's much doubt about the decision. Here's Riley. Forrest have now got a free kick almost immediately. Hodge to take it. And Hart was there. That was a good attempt by Paul Hart. And it might have brought the equaliser instantly.
wanted a bit too long, Metard. Indeed, that's been the feature of the opening period as far as he's concerned. Sure, Hiram would confirm that the game in England is that bit quicker than uh, in Holland. Metard again, and again he can't get the pass through. Muren can, though. Strachan. Now again, Duxbury's going up on the right. Strachan's found Robson. Manchester United taking the direct approach. Really good through ball by Strachan. Moses. Robson caught by Davenport here. Johnny Method. His passing in the first half well below its normal standard. And that's one of the reasons Forrest is struggling. This is Strachan. And that's not all that good either. Davidson. And neither's that. Mistakes following one another here. From both sides. And there's another one. Strachan for United. Good effort. Oh, yes, good goal. Gordon Strachan gets his second after 27 minutes. And Manchester United are 2 0 up. And that all happened because a ball from Mills to Metcod never got there. United give possession, really. But when Strachan tried that shot, it was right in the bottom corner. Just as accurate as his penalty, really. And the goalkeeper failed to get there. weeks ago on match of the day Manchester United led 2-0 at Roker Park and Sunderland came back and beat them 3-2 so we're poised here for what should prove an interesting afternoon have they learned their lesson I wonder United Remy Moses the player spoken to Sunderland on that occasion got a goal back very quickly and that's what Forrest badly need here. Davenport. Booyah, Method. And Hodge free on the left wing. Davenport. Oh, mistake by Moses. Davenport, the Queen in the way. Well, this is extraordinary. The two teams are just giving the ball away with abandon. By first division standards, the game, for just about five or six minutes, is almost uh, at Sunday league level. And Robson's made a run from the centre of the field here, trying to latch onto Brazil's header, but instead. It's Bowyer for Forrest, Davenport, and now they've got six forward, Mills. And Davidson, and a touch on by Riley, out by McQueen, and it's Bowyer on the left foot. And uh, I'm not sure whether Hodge got a latent touch to that, but it uh, certainly got a deflection. He thinks it's a corner. But in fact, the referee says goal kick. <laughs> Duxbury and Brazil. Moses, Strachan. again McGrath in the chest of Stapleton nicely done Hart coming across and the 
Lions thoughts very much on attack. And a foul by Brazil on Davidson. free kick has gone to Forrest they've all gone forward except for Fairclough Mills took it Hart was climbing, Bowyer's in there and that throw by Gary Bailey destined to put Strachan away but uh, Fairclough is there and here he is again Hodge Swain. Messhod. As a result of the events of that first half, Manchester United have a new top scorer because Bayern Club's team are two behind from the accurate shooting of Gordon Strachan, who's now got 13 this season for United. Eight of them, including one today, have been penalties, and he's given his side a healthy situation to talk about in their dressing room at half-time. Well, we'll see what effect Brian Clough's words have had at half-time as Nottingham Forest playing now from the right, face an uphill task here. And Nottingham Forest bench on the extreme right, almost hidden, We'll just catch sight of Gary Bertles, who's played for both these clubs and has been out of action all season with a back injury. I'm pleased to say he's now back in training, hopes to play at Christmas, just scratching his ear there. And now Davenport. Mills. Bowyer's in the centre here for Forrest, and Swain is joining the attack. Bowyer couldn't make it. Shot by Riley. Wide. Gary Bailey's goal threatened for the first time as seriously as that. Swain's header across. Bowyer couldn't make it, and Riley it was who poked his effort wide of the far post. But it's a warning to Manchester United not to grow complacent on this lead. Swain Davenport looks for Bowyer Riley coming towards the ball but McQueen was too and he found Strachan and now it's interesting three against three Stapleton's made his run to take away one defender but Swain caught Strachan so it's Mills for Forrest scored by the player who Ron Atkinson wanted to sign just a matter of a few weeks ago Steve Hodge McGrath with the free kick for Manchester United Fairclough's header away Strachan good effort again Stapleton It's come to Strachan. Oh, brilliantly done by Strachan. Fair close was the tackle, and I suspect it was just outside the area. Well, conjuring tricks. 
takes on the ball from Strachan. Stapleton! Well, how it didn't go in, no one's too sure, least of all Stapleton. Somehow Sega's got his hand to it. It was a very fine save. Struck it with the corner. And a punch out, McGrath this is. And that's going to be a goal kick. Well, the referee says that anyway. So it could so easily have been 3-1 there. Join the Forest attack on the right. And there are four waiting for a cross here. Mills. In fact, there are six in there now. Davenport. And Riley. Only half cleared. Mills. Goal! Ago. They forfeited a two goal lead. McQueen has stayed forward here, although the play is well away from him for the moment. It's a goal kick, and we move into the last minute of normal time with the score 2 2. McQueen makes his way back now. Johnny Methot forward. Flick on by Riley. And was it a foul? Blackmore on Davenport. Just outside the area in the very last minute. Now I wonder whether Johnny Method or one of his colleagues can produce something here right at the end. And Method curls it, yes! 3-2, just into stoppage time, and Johnny Method goes on one of the longest laps of honour of the season. A goal right out of the European textbook, and it's given Nottingham Forest, it would seem, a famous victory when the game seemed in Manchester United's pocket at half-time. What a comeback, and what can you say about Manchester United? Two up at Sunderland, they lost 3-2. Two up here, they trail 3-2. Johnny Method with a moment of magic. And it was enough to win the match for Forrest and the three points. And what a turnaround. City ground. Gordon Strachan put his side two goals up, but Forrest launched their recovery through Steve Hodge, through Gary Mills, and then in the very last seconds through Johnny Metton. Just how unpredictable Cannon League football can be.